Okay, so as far as my prison wife goes, I think that basically Nikki is so sort of like, you know, cynical and kind of like, you know, been there, seen that, like, you know, uh, gotten high, seen the world, comes from sort of like this uh, rich background that she's kind of pretending she doesn't in order to, you know, play the tough guy in prison and not get shanked. And I think that, um, you know, in Lorna, she find like, uh, Lorna is so, you know, like sweet and pure and racist and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't really think about the expectations like people have on me or something or how like Asians think if this messes up, they're gonna have to wait another 20 years till the next one or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an experience that I want to go through, have fun with, and just make it last as long as I can. Mike and all the writers make it a point to surprise the audience and that oftentimes surprises us. I remember I was surprised in the, wed the wedding episode where when Andy was like the smallest sibling among the, all of his brothers, <laughs> like he'd been picked on and pushed around like a little twerp his whole life by these dudes who were like 6'8 and 6'10. Yeah. That was surprising. That was, really, that was a great detail. It didn't really make the show a lot got cut out, but when you were getting married to April, your brothers were there, and the whole time they were just pushing you. Yeah. And like punching you in the balls while you were getting yeah. married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Dustin Hoffman had told me, listen, you want to get your own stuff done, form a film company. You just, that's easy to do. You can just form a film company, you call it a film company, and it's just a name on a piece of paper that you register somewhere. And I did, because then you can acquire and store properties. So in this conversation with Lori, she said, what I really want to do is run my own film company. You know, you get one of those ding things going on. I said, well, guess what? I have one and I need somebody to run it. We have always approached the show from a slightly more emotional standpoint. So the, the sort of surface idea of will they stay or will they go was sort of the last thing we thought about and what we really sat down with when we started to brainstorm the trajectory of this last season was what do these characters need what will make them happy what will make the audience happy what will uh, ultimately be satisfying for both the audience's expectations and our characters that was the first scene that we shot um, I mean, it wasn't even like on a shooting day, was it? No, it was like, like a pre-shoot. Pre-shoot But it was day. a pre-shoot. Yeah. But it was, it was perfect. Yeah. I mean, it was nice that we were, first of all, you know, contained mm -hmm. in a you know, very small, simple space. And, and, you know, I mean, it was Coney Island. So right. it was beautiful and, and it was easy. And uh, working with Rami was great. And you know, I think it was the right way to sort of start off. It, yeah. it, it felt really, really good. And, and I was certainly happy to like get it behind us too. Yeah, I think the most surprising thing that I've found is like how many like-minded people there are. Because I spent like a good chunk of my life having no community and having nobody that thought like me or processed things like me to then get into this industry. And everyone's like, no, I feel very similar about a lot of things. And so that was a very surprising thing to me. My favorite stuff doesn't have any sort of classification. It's kind of just, it's a story, you know, and there's elements of, of all those things, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but we did have a very conscious, Alec Berg, who I created this with, we, we had a very, Conscious of the very first shot of the pilot be something that was more disturbing, um, which is Barry in a room and a man's been killed and he's just getting his gun and leaving. That almost was there for a purpose, not only to say this is what he does, but also to give you a sense of here's a tone. This isn't, I think you hear Alec and I are doing a show about a hitman who wants to be an actor. You kind of think this kind of glib. Mm -hmm. kind of comedy uh, thing. So we were like, no, we want to make it very real, Be lead with the drama, lead with his kind of existential crisis and the emotion, and then have the comedy be behind that, and that'll work. Up, up until this point, uh, as the group, they've sort of um, seen obstacles come at them from the exterior, but I think after the first episode, you kind of gather that the, the, the group dynamic is being challenged, and as a result, I would say over the season, there's kind of like a little bit more uh, emotional anchor points to kind of latch on to, not to say that the show's gonna become like, um, you know, like girls or anything like that. Uh, it, it still is, you know, <laughs> Mike Judge's sentimentality level, which is um, 
small. Yeah, the the pilot episode really is an ode to all the fans. It's saying. Here we are. We're back together, and we're giving you everything we think you're hoping for, and and it's setting up the premise for what the new show is about, which is really about us three women raising these four kids. So if you haven't heard already, I mean, the original cast is together for the first episode, and then like uh, the other characters, Danny, Jesse, Joey, Aunt Becky, they pop in and out for some episodes. I don't come in with an agenda to cause problems. I come in with an agenda to get the story.、Mm -hmm. And I do notice people. It's amazing how many people still roll their eyes. They can't stop it because you hear something that's annoying, and you're like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "What's wrong?" Ah,、oh, that's just it's just the dumbest thing. That you you <laughs> just said that, and then I'm like, "Ah,、oh, now, now we're going." <laughs> I actually haven't watched this show with like many big audiences before. You know, really? Well, it's rare. I, I think. To have a television show that you get to screen like this—it's new. Like you know, it just went to the Tribeca Film Fest last、mm -hmm. year, but that's a new thing. You know, usually they're bringing films there. You're not usually bringing shows there. So、right. I haven't seen this more than a few times with a, a larger crowd. But yes, it's always a bit of a cringe moment because it comes out of nowhere, which is the idea, right? Is the idea that this person is just kind of.、Um, Kind of blacking out and having this sort of a t attack almost. I have an amazing team of really great comedy writers and、uh, and great magicians. We kind of all collab, and I try to find people who I think are really funny but know nothing about magic, so they're not like their brainstorming is it, their brainstorming isn't restrained by what they think they can do or not. You know, so people they'll pitch ridiculous things. You know, how about you like? Levitate over a Santa sack, and you know you change his beard color a bunch of times. It's like okay, or tone it in. But but a magician would never pitch random stuff like that because they're kind of thinking, how would I do this? I was just looking around at the production design here. <laughs> like, like they didn't even bother to put a Google logo up behind us. <laughs> Uh, zero, yeah. Give it up for almost no effort, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, no one even drags something in to make it look a little prettier. <laughs> This is like a looks like a cable access sex show. <laughs> What's happening here? Welcome to the black towel.、Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it had this great family dinner scene, which we have a, a scene where the family this. Family of cops gets together、um, once a show or once a week in in the in screen time and and has a family dinner and all these colliding arcs come together and I said but it's eight pages long you know the network isn't going to go for that you're going to cut it aren't you down I said because I wish you wouldn't and Leonard said well. No, we're not cutting that scene. In fact, that's going to be a set piece of the show. In a way, that's the biggest challenge because you know most. Show, uh, your sort of television things. There's a one sort of sentence hook to what your character, or even the whole show, is about, actually. And so to have so many seemingly disparate characteristics in one person was was both challenging but also attractive to me because you know potentially I could be doing this for a long time.